and thank you for staying with us. Well, the COVID-19 pandemic has presented a lot of challenges for many across the nation, including this one challenge right here, working from home. Recent studies show there are productivity pitfalls of working from home, and sometimes staying focused can be extremely difficult at times. Well, as companies are moving forward to the post-COVID future, many are considering a hybrid model of work. What actually can be done to increase your focus and productivity in working from home? And how can your business successfully implement a hybrid work culture for you and your team in the future? Joining us very right now is our very special guest, none other than career strategist and TV contributor, Elizabeth Carrazza, who joins us back again. And Elizabeth, good to have you. Thank you for having me, Darren. I love to be here. Love having you. And obviously, you know, during this time, we definitely need you. I mean, I'm working from home. You're working from home. Millions of Americans are working from home. But really navigating this thing, uh, talk to us about how painful it's been for Americans in trying to navigate this work from home environment. Yeah, I mean, I think it's been tough for many Americans, um, especially those with young kids, people that are having to homeschool and keep up with their nine to five. It's been very stressful, very anxious. I mean, some people are actually on the flip side enjoying it. I mean, even those with kids and, and those without kids, some people are really embracing and loving the fact that they do have more time at home. So and I think it all depends on who you ask. And when we talk about asking people, if you ask most people, they'll say, listen, I do like being at home, but sometimes, just the cabin fever is really what's getting people. Um, and so there's a luxury, right? That some places are actually having an opportunity to work from a hybrid. Um, talk to us about the hybrid and how that's actually advantageous as well. Yes, well, some companies have opened up and they're, they're doing this kind of flex schedule with perhaps something like one week on, one week at home, one week in the office. And, you know, right now it's, it's working, it's working, but it, it's, this is all uncharted territory. So what I would tell people and what I would tell employees is really be patient. This is the first time in history, you know, that we really had to do this. There are a lot of unknowns. There is a lot of anxiety in the air around this because right now with COVID, there's no end in sight, right? We know right. that be a vaccine. We're hoping it will be over by next year, but we don't really know. So embracing the hybrid, embracing the work from home, knowing that you're not alone, that we're in it together, reaching out to people for help, mentors, colleagues, friends. So you can kind of vent um, and just realize that, you know, it's okay and it doesn't have to be perfect. Yeah. Give me some tips, if you will. I want to know how is it that a person can actually work more effectively, particularly in the hybrid environment? You know, uh, sometimes you're like, oh, God, I'm, I'm, I'm home and I got to go in. I'm home. I got to go in. But give me some tips for effective hybrid working. For sure. I mean, look, a lot of people um, like working from home and they think, oh, well, now I don't have to, I haven't had to pay for gas or other expenses, you know, the commute, the train ride, you know, I've, I've been able to save some money at home, but it's like, you know, just embrace whichever part you are doing. If you're at home and you're feeling sluggish and you kind of have that, you know, that 2 p.m. slump try to get out of the house, try to get out of the apartment. And I get it, a lot of us do live in smaller spaces, but you need to kind of refresh. You, you kind of need to reset, get out there, take a quick walk, see if you could take any of your calls or do some of your emails outside. Um, and then those who are hybrid and having to go into the office or the workplace, speak with your manager ahead of time. If you have worries or anxieties, voice them, ask questions. That's going to kind of calm the nerves a little bit and make you feel more in charge and more in control of the scenario. Yeah. And during this time, also, people are not just working hybridly, they're developing themselves. Some people are coming out with their own personal brands. Entrepreneurship is at an all time high. People are finding ways to really navigate and come out to another level of COVID. Uh, are you talk to me about that developing your own personal brand? Because uh, it's somewhat needed now because with so many people working and or I should say not working due to unemployment, um, creating your own personal brand could be the, the key. Yes, yes, yes. I totally agree, Darren, because so when you are at home, either working or not working, you know, you might even have more time and just be more thoughtful about what you can put online. So when you're thinking about personal brand, thinking about your vision, how do people 
people, how do I want people to perceive me? You know, um, for example, you want to think about what sets me apart from others? What's most impressive about me? And then how can I show the world how great I am from home? And being online, social media is a great way to do that. And if you're not 100% sure, you just want to dip your toe in, you know, a platform like LinkedIn or, or wherever your followers, followers are, you can take advantage of this and post a thoughtful article with just one line about, you know, check out this article. Being more active, perhaps liking and commenting. Who doesn't like to, to get, you know, praise or accolades from what they posted? So look, a lot of people might think, oh yeah, well that of course posts online, but the bottom line is people are not doing it. When we talk about not doing it, a lot of people talk about not doing it. I'm not going outside. Uh, I'm not getting out of the house anymore. And it sometimes can be a, a problem. So talk to me about these potential pitfalls, the pitfalls of not doing it and making the most of being at home, the pitfalls of not doing it and adjusting to a hybrid working environment. Talk to me about not doing it. Yes, this happens to the best of us. We, we, we get stuck in a rut. Like, this is not the easiest time. There's a lot of pressure, stress, and strain on a lot of us right now. But it's okay. There are tips and tools you can use to feel better, to feel more alive, to feel a little bit more positive about the scenario. Schedule in your calendar the things you want to do. If I know going outside and studies show going outside will help you, will freshen you up, will boost your mood a little bit. What else will boost your mood, right? Is it a certain meal that you're going to have that day? Is it a conversation that you can have with a loved one or somebody who supports you? Is it working on your personal brand and creating your strategy? You know, just even scheduling in the calendar one post I'm going to create each week. So people have their eyeballs on me. So I stay top of mind. Right. So if we're talking about, go back to personal brand for a minute. A lot of people are trying to develop theirs. What are some of the key tips that I can have if I'm developing my own personal brand? It's really, what do I want to be known for? You know, think about uh, other people out there, other people on social media that you really admire. What are they doing? How are they doing it? Do I like that persona? Do I want to do something similar? You want to be looking at people who are successful and replicating it. I'm not saying you have to copy them or be exactly the same, but that's a great role model for you to have. So you don't feel so lost and overwhelmed by thinking, oh my goodness, personal brand. No, you can do it. It's just doing it in small steps. And doing it in small steps, um, you know, a lot of people say, listen, I'm trying to go big, big quickly. And sometimes there's some failure associated with going big quickly. I don't necessarily achieve the goal that I want to. Give me some tips in terms of doing this in moderation, because I think COVID-19 has a lot of people pressing the panic button, trying to do things quickly and trying to get quick results. But the frustration could be, if I don't see the necessary results right away, I just might give up. Exactly. That can often happen. And you said the magic word, Darren, which was goal. I want everybody to set goals. It doesn't have to be this elaborate document, but you want to visualize what you want for your work life and for your career. Visualize it, write it down, what position you want to be in, how much you want to be making, what city you're in. You know, if there's no obstacles in life, just, just write it down. That's how you want to think. And then month by month, you're going to be setting goals and then creating a little mini action plan, just a couple sentences underneath each goal. Then from there, you schedule it in the calendar because what gets put in the calendar is actually what gets done. That calendar's, us, that calendar's oh so important. But talking about calendar, let's fast forward a little bit. What do you see happening in the near future? How do you see things playing out in the business world in terms of employers and employees? How do you think things, things are going to work out? You know, let me tell you something. I think a lot of employers are very surprised that employees are doing so well working from home. A lot of employees have gotten a lot of pushback in the past when, you know, asked asking their boss if they can work from home. The fear has always been they're going to slack off. They're going to be on social media all day, watching TV, on the phone, eating, running errands. But because of COVID and the high productivity level from working from home, I think employers have been very, very surprised. And they're much more open now to when COVID is finished to let employees have 
maybe one or two days at home. So employees are happy and employers are happy because the work is getting done. Yeah, but we also do have this huge unemployment rate, right? And I think also the job market, you got to talk about that. It's going to be really scarce. And so making your presence felt is going to be important when people are actually out there trying to seek a job too. You are so right, Darren. And I think it's important to reach out and ask for help. Um, someone I used to work with in the past reached out to me on LinkedIn, haven't spoken to him in maybe five, 10 years. Um, and he let me know what happened and he was looking for a new job because he got laid off. And you know what? I connected him. I sent him to different people. I check in with him because I've been laid off before. I know how it feels. So try to put yourself in someone else's shoes. If you know people have been let go, they're looking for work, see what you can do to help, you know, put your own feelers out. Even if, even if the people you're asking say, oh, I don't have anything right now, at least you're putting this person top of mind. Or if you're asking for yourself, you're putting yourself top of mind when that position comes up and potentially two, three, four months from now. It's not, it's not wasted. It's not wasted when someone says to you, oh, I'm sorry, I don't have anything right now, or oh, I don't know. But is it better now? I mean, what's the best way do you think right now to actually look for a job? I think that's going to be the key question, too, because a lot of people say, how do I look for a job? Is it just Internet plunging or what's the best way to really tackle that aspect? But the best way to find a job is to ask people, you know, people you used to work with, old bosses that that think highly of you, the people that know your work and will put their neck on the line for you by recommending you. Those are the people who are going to go to bat for you. So what I would say in this scenario, know what you want. Make it clear to the person you're asking for help. Make it clear that they know what you wanna do. If it's you're sending an email, just make it so clear so they can forward it on because people don't have time. People are busy right now, almost busier than they've ever been. So just make it easy for whoever is going to help you. All right, well, Elizabeth, we're gonna leave it there. Thank you so much for joining us and tell people again how they can get connected to you. Well, you can check out my website at uh, Elizabeth, K O R A C A dot com or any of my social media handles at Elizabeth K O R A C A. All right, Elizabeth, always great to have you. Thank you for being with us here on Open. And uh, always, when you want some strategies on how to be better about the workplace, life, Elizabeth is definitely a good person. That's that career strategist that comes with that great information. 